Wow, when you bring mysticism and relationships together, you know, everything you believed, everything without exception about relationship is is brought to the light and is just shown for the illusion that it is. Hi, my name is Jean and this is Holy Relationship Conversations. The idea is each week to invite new guests to discuss holy relationship. Uh, we will be focusing on holy relationship as seen in A Course in Miracles. So today's guests are David and Svava Hofmeister, very well-known and very devoted, deep mystical, mystical teachers of A Course in Miracles, and they are recently married two years ago, and so I'm excited to hear what they have to say about holy relationship. So, welcome, David. Welcome, Svava. Hey. Hello. 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 <laughs> so, let's get started. I think uh, the obvious question is what is holy relationship? I think there's a lot of confusion. Um, that even though there's a lot in the Course in Miracles about holy relationship, I'd love to hear it from Svava and David. What does it mean to you? Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, the holy relationship, um, for me, it's it all comes back to the holy instant, the present moment, um, and the only true relationship is between me and source the one the one in the one mind aligned with the one mind uh, lately i've been um, using the term of i feel I, i'm tuned i'm tuned in uh, like an instrument uh, for peace an instrument for god and um <clears throat> for uh, the the relationships and forms showing up that is the desire for me to know who I am truly to know God and uh, and David in my life has been such a an amazing uh, mirror of reflecting back to me uh, who I truly am and uh, and I have been projecting a lot onto him all these years all my unconscious beliefs about who I am not and that have been really really a deep intense undoing of of the falsity of the false perception um, of what I have been perceiving uh, in my life so um, it has been an amazing gift uh, really really uh, intense and uh, yeah the most amazing gift I God has given to me um, and then using that in every relationships that I have in my life um, our relationship has been like the catalyst of including all in in the oneness and seeing that it's all a, a gift for myself that it's all me there are no other bodies out there so it's it's like the course is teaching it's everything is just myself a reflection of myself and uh, and for me to undo the falsity and remember who i am so so our relationship is for undoing the falsity and remembering the truth um remember the joy the peace the love and what we truly are so yeah, that is the holy relationship, how I would um, express it in words. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> yeah, I think it's the first thing that comes to mind with holy relationship is the holy instant. And yeah, I remember there were times where, you know, basically Svava would say, yeah, my function from now on is to, to teach the holy instant. And and I think that holy relationship is is a, an expression. It's a symbol of of that light, that that vast vast light of Christ, the vision of Christ, and 
and basically you know the, the form is just being used by the spirit by the holy spirit and jesus you know to draw the mind fully into that light as jesus says you know in the text that no single instant does the body exist at all it's always remembered or anticipated so while the mind is sleeping and still still dealing with remembered and anticipated thoughts past thoughts and future thoughts or is the workbook lesson for today is my mind is preoccupied with past thoughts i think the holy relationship is it's also universal. I think oftentimes when people come to try to practice the course, they they read the section or the word holy relationship, but their past reference point is so much tied into bodies and interpersonal relationships that they they kind of interpret holy relationship to be more like soulmate than universal. Like like holy relationship would be being in touch with your own holiness and the holiness of everyone else. And so that would just kind of radiate out and ripple out to everyone in a very universal way. It's not uh, it's not really interpersonal. It, the spirit can use the belief in the interpersonal and certainly does because Jesus always has to meet us, the, meets the mind where it is, so it doesn't try to skip over anything and just go 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 into your light episodes today and you know forget about lunch and forget about the children and forget about everything. Just have your light episodes all day long. But I think holy relationship is is practical mysticism too because you know you want to be joyful and light and loving and happy and radiate that and then. It's more like holy relationship is a reflection of the mind's happiness. Mm. And I think of holy relationship, you know, it, the way Jesus describes it is it's he calls it like a like a like a very high uh, teaching and learning um, experience. It's like, you know, when you've reached the heights of of teaching and learning, then then your relationships are a reflection of holy relationship. But it's not just person to person. As uh, I've had people even ask me over the many years, you know, uh, I want a holy romantic relationship. You know, they they will actually insert the word romantic in the middle of Jesus's two words, holy relationship. But I think he's already saying holy relationship is is an is an expansive expression of that, where where the goal is the purpose. The goal is uh, is forgiveness, is seeing the falsity of the world and rejoicing in the mind. So when Jesus says minds are joined, bodies do not, that's that's like a an obvious reversal of of the ego's view of relationship, which is that minds are separate and the bodies join. And Jesus said, no, minds are joined, bodies do not. It's, a, it's an absolute 360 flip from the focus of the ego on to the past, because the body is, body is a past thought, and anything that we have unresolved will be portrayed or acted out in that past thought. And we have to come back and Jesus says, but the past is gone, it can touch you not. Why, why would you persist in trying to need things from your brother and want things from your brother? I do remember that one line where Jesus says, when you want anything from a brother, you will see him as a brother no longer. That that just is, reminds me of the Bible, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, the beginning of the 23rd Psalm, because uh, relationships that we would call interpersonal are based on need and lack and need fulfillment, getting needs met. And, if, and that's why people would enter into what they consider a relationship to get the needs met. And I've heard teachers say, yeah, Anybody who tells you they have no needs are lying. Uh, 
it's basically pointing to that when the mind starts to go into the abstract, starts to go into the ascension, the needs do, at that point, begin to fade and grow dim and disappear. So I think that's that's something that Svava and I really experience because we do have quite a few abstract moments that pop through in our days and weeks and 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 it's very vast and and with it comes like a fading away of of the things that used to be pretty uh common like well uh, in the in recent weeks some um, Svava and I have been talking about like this this hot tub uh, at the peace house that requires chemicals like maybe every she was doing them every Sunday and every Wednesday. But when we would have our joining, sometimes we would have a call on a Sunday or a Wednesday, and she would say, "Oh, you you mentioned the hot tub. That just brought the the chemicals and the hot tub back into mind because." Before that moment, the, the, the hot tub and the chemicals were gone. So I feel like that's also part of holy relationship is that you really have to trust the Holy Spirit with all things because you start to remember the present and therefore you start to forget the timeline and you, you don't feel oriented on the timeline. You know, it's not like oh, today's Monday, today, Tuesday, Wednesday, you know, you on the timeline, Tuesday always follows Monday, Wednesday always follows Tuesday. But when you go more into mysticism, you you actually have a forgetting that's starting to occur. I call it a spiritual amnesia, a spiritual Alzheimer that that is actually a natural thing that happens. And and I, I'm sure people are fascinated, but you can start to see that the that the agreements and the the things of the agreement even to be on the timeline is now being dissolved. And, and in typical relationships, that always brings up stress. Because change was the first experience that the mind experienced with the fall from grace. And now every time there's a change in form, even around things like hot tubs, it brings up a little bit of, of disorientation. Like, wait a minute, I could... I could always handle the hot tub, at least the hot tub. And now our conversations have shifted to some prompts coming in, maybe of of shifts and movements coming in. And and now we're talking about even things that we never had talked about, like winterizing the hot tub, perhaps even in the middle of winter. Never has that come about. But but it's just a given thing because the mind needs to soar. It needs to go up higher and higher into the ethers and it has to go to the light so typical things have to uh, fall in line and uh, we just have to follow our guidance so that we don't uh, you know we don't feel there's any kind of a, a strain we don't want to strain uh, we want to just follow that gentle guidance and keep going with it yeah uh, recently david i heard you refer to relationships as undefined guided collaboration and for me that was really very helpful no, I, when you're talking about the hot tub I'm thinking that when you say collaboration it's not like a, a project in a company it's it's like these hot tubs and these things that come up it's just is it just inviting spirit into every one of these timeline situations and is there is it is what makes it a relationship I don't even know what makes what is a relationship <laughs> it's dissolving the it's dissolving the concepts but yeah it dissolving the the idea of otherness really I would say yeah <laughs> you yeah. really see there 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 is no other yeah <laughs> there is just one one mind yeah. yeah, even we have interesting talks on collaboration because when you mention the word relationship to human beings and the world thinks of relationships as very interpersonal. And and when you mention the idea of collaboration, that's also another word that brings up very strong interpersonal like group or two or more, you know, 
things, but but actually what Svava and I are experiencing is that that to use the cross as a as a symbol, the vertical axis and the horizontal axis, the vertical axis is just pure alignment with spirit and Holy Spirit. And the horizontal axis is the earth plane, the time space, past, present, future plane. And so it's always in the moment where they intersect that that is where the collaboration is. So I have had for many years many experiences, and Svava has been having them also for years, of that the collaboration is always with the spirit, is is always with the guidance. It, it really is not, it only seems to be horizontal, but when you actually look to the horizontal, uh, it gets very confusing. I'm sure, like, even for you, Jean, you know, you were saying you had this downloads and and you've had some great miracles and and over the summer and different times just different plate you're just getting so connected and and inspired and and it can come with guidance like like with this series of on holy relationship to contact certain people but the guidance comes internally to you what to do and you just follow it and you extend the invitations and then you see what happens and so in that sense, even there, it's a vertical thing. It's it's you listening and receiving and following uh, that's all coming, we'll just say it's a totally internal matter. And that's really the teachings of Jesus, is that everything's happening in your mind. And at one point, he even says, you cannot relate with your brothers in 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 an external way, meaning ultimately you can't really relate in terms of the form because as long as you're seeing your, your brothers as form and your sisters as form, you're not really seeing in light, in Christ's vision. And the collaboration is solely designed to bring us to Christ's vision. It's, it's, it's not designed to accomplish projects, even though Obviously, you've worked with companies and done web design, and you're used to, like we were too, very much collaborating. Uh, I've done collaborations with with teaching and conferences and many different community experiences. And and yeah, Svava's whole life has been collaborations with designing clothes and and collaborating, you know, raising children. And there's there's many ways in form. But once you go deep enough, you start to realize it's just, oh, I will step back and let him lead the way. It's I, the voice for God can direct me all through the day without interrupting my regular activities in any way. That it's a like her, like uh, Svava saying tuned in, like just being tuned in is our full responsibility. And that's the collaboration with spirit. So it's just like with relationship, it's so different than anything we were raised with or any of our past learning. And but that's the topic that, that Svava and I talk a lot a lot about because it's like a realization. It's a it's a realization of freedom. You don't have to wait for anybody else to play their part because it's all happening now. In, in, within you now. <laughs> <laughs> it's this instant. It's the collaborative yeah. uh, joy. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. What's been on my mind about relationship and Svava, you touched a little bit on it, is just how much the minute there seems to be a relationship in form, so much kicks in, everything you were talking about, all the past learning, everything kicks in. But that's but this draw and attraction to another person can be used by spirit to reflect, to, to show us what's in our mind, is that, um, would, I would say, in early days in the relationship, was there a lot of that going on? Or were you always just kind of sitting in presence with David? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, personally, I, I've been kind of shocked at how much the minute there's this relationship idea comes in, it just, it's like an addiction and an obsession and so much comes up. But then I finally accepted that, wow, this is really helpful. I didn't know all that was there. 
and it it became a way a, a way of letting go was to let it come out so yeah um <clears throat> it's been a lot of facing uh beliefs and thoughts and it was a point i realized that i was I was addicted to being abandoned and rejected and 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 believing I'm not good enough, you know, all the eco attributes just and and I had given David the character of playing all that out. Like he was like seemingly been like the main uh, character in my movie. And uh, and as long as I in the beginning I was believing still in it. So I was in suffering. I was like, whoa, this is so intense. But gradually seeing, wow, I am putting that out there. I am giving all these characters these roles to reflect back at me. And basically, you, I could choose to believe in it and be in suffering, or I could choose to invite the Holy Spirit in it and see that it was all me, all me, like really taking the responsibility back. And there was a time where I so clearly saw it all and it all just collapsed like that, an instant. It was like, I, I really saw it was all me. No one is doing anything. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, but it's been a, uh, a deep process in really realizing that and and admitting it like you know in AA you know I am an alcoholic you know I I was <laughs> addicted to false perception I was addicted to this you know it was whoa wow and that was a huge realization that dawned upon me and wow I'm doing it all to myself <laughs> no one <laughs> there is no one there <laughs> <laughs> the idea of there is someone there was so strong yeah we we so it's so convincing it's so extremely convincing uh, but the like like jesus says in the course in miracles we have to question every belief we have we had to really turn everything around and uh and yeah and it takes willingness yeah which which we all have truly you know it is inevitable. Um, the, yeah, the, the yeah, waking like... up, the waking up is inevitable, and then seeing that there is no waking up because we were always awake. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, like you know, the saying in the world is, "Where does the rubber meet the road?" And wow, when you bring mysticism and relationships together, you know, everything you believed everything without exception about relationship is is brought to the light and is just shown for the illusion that it is uh, so in heaven you know it's just pure oneness and eternity and love and light and and oneness with god and with everyone and everything and all the cre creations and then the the projected world is 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 no relation to heaven whatsoever. Uh, even old ideas about bringing the kingdom of heaven to earth, you know, Jesus is like, no, you need to bring the illusions to the truth. You need to bring your perception of earth, your linear perception of earth to the, to the light, and it will disappear. You know, perfect love cast out fear. But I think, too, that it's you start to realize that the seeming addictions to the abandonment, rejection, guilt, shame, and all that are really just addictions to linear time. You know, it's it's just saying no to the holy instant and saying no to to the universe, to, to the source, and saying, no, I want to I want to play the authority problem out and I'm going to play it out in linear time with bodies and people and I'm going to hurl the guilt and the shame and the abandonment and everything that that seems to be there just from believing in separation from God, but believing in the fall from grace, I'm going to put it on the bodies. And that's the common way that it's experienced in the human experience. But but once you, I mean, I've just been going through those early lessons. They're always so great and, and, and ooing and aahing with everybody around me too. At, oh my gosh, the, 
the, she, let's, she, she, wants so to... she wants to join in. She heard our voices. But <laughs> um, but that thing of like just the yes lesson yesterday, you know, I, I see only the past and 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 then today my mind is preoccupied with past thoughts. It's it's clear that that it's a time addiction that pure contentment, pure presence that Muji talks about, or the power of now that Eckhart talks about, is, is really offered uh, as a gift. It's the gift of grace. And then all attempts to, to hurl issues out onto bodies and situations and everything is, is really a delay maneuver, kind of the ego saying, no, you're not, you don't want to be content. You, you would rather have the spice of life so in answer to your question, yeah, I think when Svava and I first met, you know, it was very miraculous and an invitation and to come to a retreat over in uh, Holland and she was at Denmark at the time and then and then changed her mind, decided not to come and then um, sent in a message saying to the organizer, you know, I'm, I'm not coming. But the, we found out later that the organizer received the message and basically ignored it with a smile on his face. Uh, you know, so we could see there was a lot of things working together to seemingly bring us together in a prearranged script, basically, that, that was already written. We were brought together and, and it, there was so much joy, so much love, like everything, the room lighting up in the joy and the love, which, you know, in, in one sense, the spirit has to draw us back to the light. And we do need those reflections and symbols of that love, that feeling of love, you know, to take us in towards something that's way beyond any conception or perception of love. You know, the real thing is so far beyond it, but it was that way. And, and over these was it been seven, eight years or so? It's there's been what the world would call lots of collaborations that involve traveling and speaking and music. And initially, uh, that was like a huge trip for Svava to fly from from Copenhagen, you know, to to Amsterdam. That was like a massive trip, but that was that pales in comparison to what came after that. Like trips to the United States and Australia and gargantuan trips compared to what what she was used to. And the, the, that was, I, I'd have to say, of course it's unsettling. It was unsettling for me when I first started giving myself over that way. It's, you know, none of us are really accustomed to living out of a suitcase and, and like that, uh, uh, George Clooney movie up in the air, you know, where he's up, the whole movie is up, he's up in the plane, 32,000 feet. Most of the movie, you know, above his whole business life, his whole life is up in the air. And we had that too for, for some years too. And, and of course it flushes up all the ego stuff from the, from the unconscious, because, you know, we're used to having a house and rooms and, and not living out of a suitcase and, and I was, I was very shy when I was in, uh, as a child in high school and all the way through most of uh, university. And, and in some ways, Svava was kind of more on the shy side. So when we joined together with my life of travels and across continents and meeting people, that, that was, uh, you know, a, a big flusher because, um, it's one thing when you're just practicing open communication and heart-to-heart -heart talks, but when you've got the whole thing swirling around you so fast, it just makes it for intense. And then, and also maybe, Svava, you can share, like when you started to go deep inside to channel this amazing music and all these albums came out, it like tapped into an ancient connection you had with spirit but the ego you know it just was very difficult because the the egoic reaction to that direct connection with spirit can be can seem enormous and so 
it it even made everything go more into a celestial speed up like everything that coming to that point of let go that, that Spava just talked about it kind of takes you like a funnel like a gauntlet into this point of oh it's all all my mind <laughs> oh my gosh i've been i've been doing this to myself and and i don't want to do this anymore but it's it's yeah it's quite uh, intense at times mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's been quite a quite a roller coaster. Almost like so much light, like completely beamed and then boom, like completely like laying in the dirt, like crying out like on the floor. It's been such a roller coaster to these uh, almost seemingly like this huge contrast experience because I seemingly been used so uh, so much in receiving and 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 strengthening the the vertical connection and and really trusting and and taking huge leap of faith trusting this because like in the beginning with the music oh my god all these thoughts and these all these thoughts about you're not good enough you can't even sing who do you think you are you don't know how to play an instrument what are you doing with your you know it was just like this explosion and 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 almost like back and forth and then boom receiving songs and uh, and it was so um it was almost like i was just kicked into it and i had nothing to grab onto uh I remember way back when I started hearing songs very, like, very intensely, and I heard to learn to play the guitar. And I went to La Casa uh, because I had seen a guitar there that no one was using. So I grabbed that guitar and I started watching YouTube videos and immediately started receiving more and more songs. And, and then hearing in my mind, you're going to be playing and singing these songs at a retreat that was going to be three weeks from that time. And I was like, are you kidding me? There is no way, you know, all these ideas of perfectionism, you know, I would not do anything unless it was completely perfect. And then I would be so afraid, so I wouldn't do anything. Right. So it was like really a, a slam into, and, and I, even though I had such resistance, it was kind of like, okay, I knew this was going to happen. It was like it had already happened. I like I saw it in my mind. And then stepping into playing, the guitar could barely move my fingers and singing. But what I realized in it, it was not at all about any of that. Not at all. It was It was this connection. It was spirit reaching me to to tune in to really trust and that was my undoing of all these raging ideas that came up and then seeing the reflections from the participants so touched by this music which I felt like I don't even know how it happened how it all came how did how did this come I I it was like suddenly that was there and I didn't even remember like the steps of it it was just such a just download and it's like and I would try to push it away there's nothing to do with me I don't want it I you know this <laughs> this control coming up I know better but no we don't know anything really at all <laughs> so yeah it's uh, yeah it's been quite a quite a ride and and uh, and fun you know it's been intense but yeah it's been fun and it's really like and I have this like now this excitement you know I feel like I'm just basking in this presence like like David was talking about I I forget all the the few tasks that are in the house I, I forget the days and everything and I'm just like completely lost lost in <laughs> in 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 the eternal like and uh, and the music softer i'm working on is like i was just telling david the other day oh my god 
is like infinite possibilities. There are only few notes on the keyboard and there are like, it's infinite and all the, you know, it's like, whoa, I get so excited. So yeah, I just get lost in, in, in the flow of the spirit and yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think the, the, the main advice or the main gift of it all is that, that this is a journey that will seem like an undoing until it doesn't anymore, mm -hmm. until there, it doesn't feel like an undoing. It feels full, it feels vibrant, it feels joyful and happy. But but if if you had to, to describe it, it seems like there's there's lots of unconscious stuff that will come up and there will be much, much undoing, much uh, wailing and gnashing of teeth, much much grinding through things you know it's it's not like all just flowers and roses it's basically uncovering the falsity and being willing to uncover the falsity and then what comes the flowers and fruits from that uncovering is is most glorious but it's like that workbook lesson 189 where jesus is saying you know simply do this be still it's, it's one of those those workbook lessons, lay aside all thoughts of what you are, what God is, all concepts you've learned about the world, hold on to nothing. You know, it that that really, when I first read that, uh, I was in the workbook and I was, oh my God, I could feel my heart cords just going so strong because it was almost like the spirit and, and Jesus was just saying, pay attention, I'm trying to give it to you straight. This isn't about building something. It is not about building a relationship, building a community. It's not about building a new world. It's it's a let go. And, mm -hmm. and all the way through, it's about a let go. Um, recently in our community with Francis's passing, big let go, big, huge let go. Uh, and, and even when we have our joinings and meetings, it's not so much about what will happen or what we're going to build together you know that's kind of a thing in the world let's let's build something together you know it's it's more of an undoing of all the ambitions and goals to make the world a certain way or make make a better future or you know any of those things that are quite common you know the world says chase your dreams and then Jesus is saying no just truly see that you're dreaming this and that you're responsible for your state of mind. That's all I want you to do. Nothing more, nothing less. Don't try to accomplish something in form because the, the point is, is to, to let go and to realize you've always been perfect as a spirit. And, and in this moment, it's always been perfection. It, you don't have to chase it in the future or you don't even have to go back and dig up the past and try to figure out what went wrong or fix it that so contradicts the human experience that's that sounds like otherworldly that sounds like what what sci-fi uh, movie are you book are you reading but but then we start to feel no this is no science fiction this is this is our coming closer to reality closer to the light and and accepting all things exactly as they are and it's no small thing to let go of ambitions, you know. I mean, all three of us have seen we've had skills and abilities, and and I know you, Gene, too. With you have lots of skills and abilities, but now the willingness to really hand them over and kind of say, I don't know what this is or what they're for, and I thought they were for making a living and and family life and all the other things, but now maybe all of that wasn't what they were for either, <laughs> and. And so we've had to really let go of of thinking we were in control or that they were our own personal skills because we don't really own these things. <laughs> they're, they're just symbols that the spirit wants to to use in a playful way, like feathers dancing in the wind, you know, nothing nothing serious at all. So I think what we're finding in holy relationship, there's more laughter, there's more genuine heartfelt experiences and expansiveness. We love to share our miracles. We love when we have miracle experiences, we love sharing them. And that's 
that's a, most of the dialogue is is our miracle experiences that we have because it's like we're just offering the blessing and we're receiving that blessing by giving it away and it feels good holy relationship feels really great <laughs> <laughs> So now I'm wondering back back in the timeline, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, it seems like as people, we, we are so drawn to relationship, to romantic relationship. Can that be used? Can, can saying yes to a, a special relationship be used to take us to that place to learn to to love everyone and to to not see separate people anymore that you hear people say oh, i just want to be married or i want to have um that desire can it shouldn't be pushed away it should be you it can be used or is that am i yeah hand yeah, it to jesus yeah, yeah. That's, that's good yeah a good one to I, hand you to know, jesus <laughs> i i would not have you know seemingly let go of everything and left everything if, if I wasn't attracted to David, you know, in love with David. If yeah. that wasn't there, it, it wouldn't, you know, so so spirit, yeah, use that to to bring us together. So yeah, it it, it all relationships uh, in this world between seeming bodies are special. You know, it's all this whole world is specialness, you know. So this is the holiness and and spirit uses all all the forms to to bring us back to to undo and let it let it all go let the false perception go so we come back come back home you know and and from that that place uh, live you know and that is the that is the happy dream um, yeah. yeah i like to keep it really broad too though that that the holy spirit can use anything that the ego made so Ego made time and space, made the cosmos, made all the bodies. So in form, it can seem to be very different from living the, the life of, let's say, like a Buddhist. Uh, I've got my orange on today. <laughs> uh, probably Buddhist monk uh, with an orange robe who's just going through the, you know, the, the different prayers and prayer wheels and different things like that versus, we'll say, a uh, an interpersonal romantic relationship, those seem to be very different. There's even movies that have explored those topics, like Samsara, you know, where, you know, the Buddhist monk's in there in the cave, or cave meditating and everything, and he goes, just goes outside to check something, he sees a woman, and and there it is, it's called Samsara. But but the Samsara is, is not in the form, it, it's in the mind. The ego is is the the temptation to to ignore the light the the ego is the temptation to run from the light and try to make something else that's the authority problem to make something other than what god creates but you start to feel it on a more of a broad way so so where you can see that that the romantic relationships are used then you could say you know, we even have movies like Dark City, where it's dark, dark, dark through the whole movie. You probably have seen the movie. And then at some point, there's like an injection or infusion of light from the Holy Spirit. And all these memories come. And then the the, the one character, the doctor, turns into the teacher in all the memories and says to the main character, there's no time for romance, you know, as he as he's tasked with letting go of the entire dark world and turning the dark world back to the light. That's the instruction that comes in. But you see how it has to be progressive based on what the mind is capable of and what the mind believes. You know, it has to be something where the Holy Spirit has to use the uh, love's attraction for itself. You might say that deep inner attraction for love. And of course it comes forth in distorted ways and, and in dim ways, we'll say it's not, it's dim reflections, but compared to the vastness of, you know, if you if you come to the faintest understanding of what love means today, 
He says you have advanced in distance without measure and in time beyond the count of years. You know, he's kind of using words poetically to say, you ain't seen nothing yet. In fact, if you're perceiving the world, you clearly ain't seen nothing yet. The vision of Christ is, is light, it's abstract. That's the goal I am determined to see. Above all else, I am determined to see things differently. You know, all those lessons are aimed at, at the vision of Christ. And I've had the three revelatory experiences, and nothing in the world compares even to the revelatory experiences. It's unspeakable. I, I, people ask me to explain it, and meh, it can, you can't even come up with, there's not enough words in the human language to begin to throw something toward it because it's so vast. So for me, it, it's like when you get those prompts, and even if you have a desire or a longing for a romantic relationship, still, if you give that to Jesus and say, you know, please use this. You take this desire and I give it to you and give me back an experience of a miracle, of a release from my mind where I'm set free from what I believed I wanted. Uh, because underneath all my, the seeming ego wishes and desires is the desire for God's love. It's so deep that he says you would weep if you remembered that song of prayer, that you would just weep you would that, that forgotten song is so glorious that you would tears would just roll down your face if you if you remembered it. So that's good because it kind of puts it into context where like when I've been used by spirit to let it speak through me on all these different continents and on different countries, you know, I've been hugged by so many people, not as many people as like Ama, but but hugged by a lots of people, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. And that was even a beautiful experience for a shy guy uh, from Cincinnati who, who basically didn't have, who could count all of his friends on one hand. Uh, and then the experience of miracles and getting hugged and embraced by all these people has been heart opening. Uh, it's, it's been a way that I could take it in. And, and that's the beautiful thing, I, I feel like, is, is like, what, if you, whatever the desires are, you just give them to the Holy Spirit and Jesus and say, it's yours now, it's your show, uh, you know how to use it in a helpful way. And, and it's always good to remind ourselves that, that you can say, I don't know how to use them, but you do. <laughs> and, and you're with me. So, so it's it's going to work out. It's it's really going to work out, and and it does work out. Hmm. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, like you said, it's always underneath. It is the the call for for God in our heart. So it's everything when we're given our surrendered and given ourselves over. Then everything that shows up in our perception is for undoing of what is not, and then coming back to the love that is our true desire their only desire is is to is to know to mm. know love yeah true love <laughs> yeah and it, it works also when you are saying no i don't want a relationship that it's the same thing it's like it can't be me deciding anymore i have to let go of turn that over too which i recently learned as I used to ask David on every retreat how do I get a mighty companion how do I, I want mighty companion and for all those years I was saying that but saying but not a man but not a man like I don't want that and it's like even noticing that you don't want one or you don't you want it to be in a specific form I want it to be a, a romantic relationship I want it to be with my sister or with it's like no, it's everything has to come in that in that vertical. It's it's that surrender we're always talking about. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> with relationship. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So David, you were talking about movies again. I came to you through movies, so it's always my my little favorite <laughs> subject. I know I could go search on Movie Watcher's Guide to Enlightenment search relationship but do you have one really one of your favorite holy relationship movies you could recommend for us 
Hmm. Wow, there's so many. Um, well, the one, a couple have come to mind. In fact, I'm going to start doing the movies again every other uh, Saturday starting on uh, the 13th of this month. But a couple came to mind just when I was thinking of ooh, starting up movies again. Um, one was Always uh, with Holly Hunter and John Goodman and Richard Dreyfuss. Uh, and and it's so beautiful because it, it juxtaposes uh, the special relationship with the holy relationship. And Audrey Hepburn, I think that was Audrey Hepburn's last movie. What a what an actress. What presence. She plays like an angel that will guide the Richard Dreyfus character, you know, Pete, when he he dies in a plane crash trying to save his his buddy John Goodman uh, and then can't pull out of the the dive to, when he's trying to put the fire out in in uh, his his uh, engine. But 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 it goes, the op movie opens with the special relationship and it's very oozy, oozy romantic with uh, with Holly Hunter and 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 it, it goes on. But then there's a premonition that that she has that, you, you know, your number's up. She's even aware that he's going to, to die. It's very in the middle of all the specialness and all the future thoughts of their life together and all the future, future, future comes this premonition, your number's up, Pete. And then when it comes in, it's very comical how how he is told by Audrey Hepburn, you have to you have to go back, you have to give it away. You don't take anything away with you that that you had there. You it's all about giving it away. So she sends him back as to be like an angel and to help out this this tall man named Ted, who starts to be uh, finds he's attracted to his his ex girlfriend, his special relationship partner, and now he's got to help the tall guy who's falling in love with his girl. You know, hey, that's my girl. That's my girl. Steven Spielberg, Kathleen Kennedy. You know, a fantastic movie for shifting from specialness to holiness to really coming to understand where he has to help her in the end when she's taken a plane, and he has to come through with her and give away everything because he loves her, and then he has to finally realize, like I was just reading in my live lesson today, that the teacher of God, you know, teaches to make himself no longer necessary, no longer needed. He finally has to give the final lesson of giving it all to her where he can say, now you've got a life, now go on. Mm -hmm. And so that's one that comes to mind. And then um, I think there are, are so many, but um, I was thinking a little bit of that uh, movie with uh, uh, Nicolas Cage uh, in which he he has a marriage to a woman named Mar Muriel, uh, who basically it's quite based on uh, reciprocity and transaction. It's a transactional relationship, which is what, that's how all relationships start out, is transactional, give and get. Uh, people get into relationships for transactional purposes. Uh, they think they want to fall in love, but they really are getting into it out of transactional. Reciprocity is so strong. But in that movie, you know, he's guided away towards this character, a waitress who's played by Bridget Fonda in the most glorious way. And, and it's based on a true story, so to speak, of something that happened in New York City. And, and it's a vibrational thing. So you start to realize it transcends morality because it's not about right and wrong in form. It's about the frequencies that that he basically has. He's a he's a cop. He's big hearted. He has a partner. He's always trying to be friendly and help people out. And then he helps this waitress and he was going to give her a tip, but then uh, he didn't have his wallet. So he's, he's a, a lottery ticket. He didn't have money in the wallet. So he says, OK, gives her a choice about coming back with the money for the tip or split the lottery ticket. She says, oh, let's just split the lottery ticket. Turns out it's a live lottery ticket. 
those are so good movies because they bring in all the things of of money and and scarcity and lack and lifestyle you know muriel wanted a really great lifestyle and he was in it really for the, the reasons of the heart and because of that that was his prayer then the relationships just came reflecting that where this uh this waitress, you know, played by Bridget Fonda, it was a classic story of we have to be willing to just go with what the Spirit is bringing us to open our hearts and to expand our mind and expand our awareness. That's the goal. The goal is not on the timeline. Mm -hmm. And I always love it when I, I, sh I call them classics. Those are like two classic relationship movies, but it always brings tears to my eyes when I watch them because I, I think, oh, this is all just a reminder for my mind about remember what's important. Remember what's what's true. Don't deviate into the form. Don't look for things to be different. And to me, it's actually like, like Slava was saying, you know, she was told just now you will just teach the holy instant that actually it's, it's just about staying tuned into the present moment. And it's really that simple. It's when people say, that's, isn't that an oversimplification? I say, no, that's, that's actually accurate. That's, that's an experiential feeling when you just say, I'm staying into the tune, tuned into the present moment and following my guidance and flow right now. Because actually none of us can tell the future. We don't, even if we had the best uh, storyteller, fortune teller, psychic, Jesus is telling us it's not the best use of your mind to look to the future, even though that's that's the big preoccupation for human beings is what's going to happen, what's next. And this, I feel, is always saying, no, everything that you could ever need and want is available this present moment, and you have to to just tune into it that's all you have to do. It's that simple. And all the other stuff was just preliminaries to the simplicity of stay tuned in here and now. And that's what I'm really focusing on. That's how I really, that's where my heart is right now. And I know it's the same with Slava. It's just very much a here and now, here and now, focus now, focus now. What is it now? What is it now? We have a, a, a cat, Unity, too, who's also really a good reflection of the of the now with the big innocent eyes even hopping onto our she had to get into our uh, Hello. broadcast today she with her tail going and everything you know she's she's a very much a part of our perception of 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 the now stay mm -hmm. going for the now yeah oh thank you so much oh so that reminds me that um, there's the retreat packages on the Christ.net uh, for the month of February, kind of the romantic relationship Valentine's Day month. Uh, there will be the retreat, holy relationship retreat, which has a recording that you can you can find on the Christ.net, and in that you have included the movie workshop from that online retreat. So. Um, I, I'm looking forward to that coming out, and um, and then yeah, the, rest the, the movie workshops are starting again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Every, it's every also it's it's the hyphen Christ dot net in case anyone <laughs> tries to tries to just put the words together. Yeah, it's a little hyphen in there. <laughs> I'll, I'll put the links in the description. Um, uh, MWGE, which is one of my favorites, the movie workshop, uh, movie website. Um, yeah, so thank you guys so much. I thank you. <laughs> so very helpful. I've, I'm really, this is all just for me. I have really started to dig into this holy relationship subject. I've been watching all of David's videos and trying to really look, just pray, 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 and I know this is this is for me, and hopefully it can be helpful for others as well because it's such a big subject. I think uh, you've got 
addiction with drugs and alcohol, there's food, there's money, and there's relationships. And we're on this Course in Miracles path where it says, your way will be different, a holy relationship will be given. So it's like, this has to be a big one. It's time to <laughs> do a little, little time and effort into this one. So thank you so much as always. Um, my thank teacher. You. Thank you. Thank you, Jean. Thank you, yeah, Jean. thank you. Thank you for all your help with the movie watcher's guide to enlightenment, too. You know, it, it it wouldn't the site wouldn't be the same without all of your tender loving care. And you've been such a a gift for us and, and always we just love you so dearly. And yeah, it was when uh when you sent the message, yeah, I, I, right away I called Svaba and we were like, Oh, okay, there, there we go. Jean Gene is is making a calling for us there, so we were so thrilled to to answer your call and come here. And I I look forward. I think it's going to be a great series. And yeah, I know you'll you'll find what you're looking for uh, through the through the joinings and the connectings. Thank you.